Welcome biologists. In this session we're going to take a look at spec point G for manipulating genomes where we've got a look at the ethical issues of genetic manipulation of plant, animal and microorganisms. And there are a couple of ones identified here in the spec point that we have to know about and those are the ones we're going to look at in this video. The first one we need to know about is how we can genetically modify soya so that it's insect resistant. So what they do here is they modify the soy so it produces a protein called a bt protein now this bt protein acts as an insecticide because it kills off insects uh, this is because the protein is toxic to the insect so therefore any insect that feeds on the soy will die also a benefit to this for farmers is that this uh, protein allows the plant to become resistant to weed killer which is fantastic for farmers because they can spray the crops with weed killer and it means this modified soy won't be impacted by this now some advantages and disadvantages here. So first of all, it's really commonly used in organic farming because you don't have to spray pesticides on your plant to kill off any um, insects. You also get a higher yield of crops because they're not being eaten by the insects. There's a less um, expense spent on, first of all, insecticide, but also um, you get less labor as well. So less expense there. However, against this, um, because the pest insects um are dying off there might be impacts on their predators and also damaging damage by the toxins made from that bt protein to the predators as well that survive and eat on those insects the insects might actually become resistant to the bt protein and also genes might spread to wild populations resulting in a super weed that can't be killed off or eaten by insects it does also reduce the biodiversity because you are killing off insect populations and you are growing one main plant, which is soya. Um, the main ethical issues here are painting issues, which we'll look at in a couple of slides. Uh, the next one is we can genetically modify pathogens for research. So this is where scientists can modify pathogens to help uh, to develop medical treatments uh, and also study what would happen to a pathogen um, during this manipulation and how we can prepare for that. Um, now this is really helpful because it helps us to study for epidemiological research so that's just what I mentioned there in terms of how we can uh, study these pathogens to see what, how they could change in the future and how we could help prepare for that. However against this there's big health and safety risks here for the researcher and also the wider public because you're modifying pathogens you could also like create something here that is potentially you know like pandemic style um where it can affect wide areas of, of people at the same time so the main ethical reason here is that we we could technically use this for biological warfare which is obviously something that we don't want uh, the next thing we need to know about is farming and this is where we can genetically modify animals uh, creating what's known as a transgenic organism a transgenic organism is something that has two different types of genetic information inside it such as this example here where we have some pigs that have been genetically engineered to express express a fatty acid which is found in spinach so it's trying to make that uh, meat slightly healthier for you uh, now, ad advantages for this is that the animal that does have that desired gene could either have uh, whatever benefit you've put in there in terms of what that desired gene is. That de now, that desired gene could potentially lead to a decrease in disease risk, such as um, the swine, reducing swine flu in pigs. We could end up with a faster growth rate, for example, in, in salmon runs grow to adult size fairly quickly so they can be harvested, but also a production of a human protein in milk that, can, um, that we can harvest as well. Um, against, we have some unknown areas here in terms of genetic modification, and then we do have ethical concerns here. So is it right to manipulate the genes of animals? Um, is creating transgenic animals going to cause them harm? So that's not very well studied and also there might be a welfare risk to that animal as well. Patenting is the big one here really. Now patenting is where a company can create something that's genetically modified, for example a seed, and they can patent it to prevent it from, um, prevent others from using it without paying to use it. Um, so the big thing here is uh, the main ethical reasons around it. So Farmers who would benefit the most from these patented seeds, for example, they can grow in drought, drought land with little water. Um, these poorer farmers who need seed like this um, for drought resistant and flood resistant crops 
to create that high yield, they can't afford to buy these patented seeds on a yearly basis. Um, because once that year is up, you then have to destroy your old seed and get some new one. Um, so advantages is this for the company really. The company can benefit a lot from profits on the design of their genetic modified seed. Uh, and against, you can only use that painted seed for a year and then a new one has to be bought. So the main thing here is ethical issues and concerns, which links into that first slide I showed you. And that's really everything we need to know there about the ethical issues surrounding genetic manipulation of plant and animals and microorganisms. In the next video, there are more ethical issues we need to look at surrounding gene therapy. So guys, good luck with your exams. Don't forget in your exams, don't use the word it, they, mountain size, use as much biological terminology as possible. And good luck.